super sensational as they come for home. Three quarters, one minute 12, point 25 seconds. It's travel column in front, down to this final furlong with Florent Giroux. Super sensational, Clarier still has five lengths to find and a 16 to do so as super sensational is switched out. Little Tootsie is fourth, but close to home, it's travel column. Travel column to win the Fairgrounds Oaks Handle. Welcome back to Racing Rundown. Today we have uh, the first of two uh, final videos in the Power 5 series. And this is actually the first time uh, that we're covering the Kentucky Oaks on the Power 5 series. Uh, since the Kentucky Oaks uh, is now set, uh, no more prep races left for that with the final four uh, all being conducted on Super Saturday. Uh, this being uh, today, we're recording this just after uh, all the prep races finished on April 3rd. Uh, and the Kentucky Oaks, as I mentioned, is now set and it was a little we were a little bit down on the Kentucky Oaks in terms of talent uh, mid-year with a lot of horses dropping out of it but uh, now w over the past couple of weekends this, the Oaks has gotten really really good it's going to be really really tough uh, and there's a lot of stuff to break down with the Kentucky Oaks so we're going to get into it now uh, and start with the overall top five uh, right now in our opinion for the Kentucky Oaks. So now we're going to start with uh, number five on the list. We're going to go five through one. Uh, the number five on this list is search results. Although I do want to briefly mention uh, this was a very tough uh, top five to make because five is very close between two or three horses. There's some really talented fillies that didn't make the cut for this list. And this isn't recency bias. Uh, the reason that search results gets this over a horse like Crazy Beautiful or uh, Will secret is because uh, the way she won the number one the way she won the gazelle uh, and number two is the fact that she's a lot more inexperienced than those fillies are crazy beautiful has a lot more runs under her uh, search results still a little bit green uh, and so at the end of the day and she's also undefeated so that does help but uh, talking about her now she like I mentioned undefeated nice winner of the gazelle uh, two and three quarter length victory for her uh, you know the, the top five uh, of the Kentucky Oaks is going to be really top heavy and I'm not sure if she's of those level of some of the top horses in the Kentucky Oaks but right now she she is really good you know you can't deny the fact that she's talented she won the busher before she won the gazelle both of those races were nice wins and she broke her maiden really nicely this year she didn't start as a two-year-old but Chad Brown uh, you know really this this weekend uh, kind of picked up some really nice horses for both the Derby and the Oaks we'll have some of Chad's Derby horses uh, later on uh, when we have the Derby Power 5 from this weekend uh, Chad had some nice runners this weekend uh, one horse who will likely make the Kentucky Derby a couple others who may depend on points but overall good weekend for Chad Brown uh, and especially with this filly she's going to be one of the top horses for the Kentucky Oaks for good reason Absolutely. And at number four, we have another kind of late bloomer. This one, the latest of, of any horse on the Oaks Trail, and that's uh, Richie Mandela's Soothsay, uh, only making her second career start, first start around two turns, first start in graded stakes company, and she won the Santa Anita Oaks. This was a very impressive win. Uh, shot through a hole at the rail, coming just approaching the turn, and, and was able to hold off Beautiful Gift, uh, who, who had just come off a graded stakes stakes win and beat Mariah's and Javonica who are both um, you know very well well versed at the graded stakes level so for her to do that what well, was a short field to, to win like that was very impressive uh, good pedigree for the for the distance and the surface for sure uh, comes from a, a, a very good family uh, owned by by Claiborne and Adele Dillschneider and, and, and Perry and Ramona Bass who are some of the more historic owners in in racing and have a lot of horses with Richard Mandela so uh, good to see that payoff. There was a, a comment that that Mandela might not be 100% committal to the Oaks, but knowing knowing how trainers operate, especially Richard Mandela, um, that, that's no surprise to hear something like that. But I think I think sooner or later we'll see the news that she's going. And I mean, if she's able to run, if she's able to duplicate that performance uh, in in Louisville in a month's time, it's certainly going to be uh, tough to beat her. Uh, it's a tough field, but but she's done nothing wrong to this point. And now we're going to move on to number three, uh, which, uh, you know, if, th if there wasn't uh, the presence of the number two horse on this list, uh, then the number three Clarier would be number two. Clarier has been really good this year, uh, but uh, Eric will get to why she's not higher on this list. But looking at her overall, uh, you know, she's been good in the two races that she's won. Uh, she broke her maiden, uh, then got a good second in the Goldenrod Stakes behind Travel Calm, who we'll mention uh, in a couple of minutes. Then she turned the tables on Travel Calm, and then finally uh, in the fairgrounds oaks uh she did lose but i thought that you know she had not that she was going to win the race but i thought that she had a reasonable uh excuse for not running as well as she did uh, past couple of times against travel calm and that's because uh she did act up a little bit toward the end of the race uh, and 
you know, it still shows she is a little bit green. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, she did get beat overall fair and square with with that one caveat. But at the end of the day, you know, she's a she's a talented filly in her own right. Uh, you know, she is uh, I, I made this comment to, to Eric before we started recording that how many curlin fillies uh, out of great. Uh, out of grade one winners there are in the Kentucky Oaks Trail. We'll obviously talk about Malathot, who uh, is going to be on this list, and uh, she's out of a grade one winner. So is Clarier. So really, really good weekend for Curlin, uh, really good weekend for Stone Street uh, overall with uh, how, how many fillies they have that are on the Oaks Trail, uh, really high-level fillies on the Oaks Trail at that. In, into the, the filly that got the, the measure of Clarier last time out in the fairgrounds, Oaks travel column. A uh, very good filly for Brad Cox, who's going to be looking for uh, his third Oaks win in, in just the last few years. Uh, travel column, no, she doesn't have the prettiest record. I mean, she has two losses on her docket, but at the same time, her wins have been super impressive, and she has excuses in both of her losses. The Fairgrounds Oaks was, was certainly a, a career best race for her, though. Uh, was able to sit a really good a trip just on just on the lead, and then uh, just just kind of blew them away. And it was a very tough field uh, that she had to face that day, and was able to beat. Um, and, and she just did it professionally. And I think uh, another great thing about her, she has you know Churchill experience, having won the Golden Rod there and broke her maiden uh, over that surface last year. So she's two for two at Churchill. She won the Fairgrounds Oaks on the lead, but in the Golden Rod, she came from well off the pace. So she's very versatile, and she just has tons of talent. And uh, you know, the third race off the layoff is going to be huge for her. That's always a great angle for for any horse, but especially from the Brad Cox barn. And she's clearly going to love going a mile and an eighth. Um, over a track she likes. So if you're looking for that home field advantage in, in a trainer that certainly knows how to, uh, I mean, the, the trainer of the, the top horse we have on our list has, has won the Oaks his fair share, but the recency, I should say, in winning the Oaks is certainly there for travel column. And uh, she's going to be live. I'd imagine she's either going to go off favorite or be a very close second choice in the betting on Oaks day. And the number one horse is Malathot, trained by Todd Pletcher. Malathot uh, is number one on the list. Uh, and if you ask both of us, Malathot has been our Kentucky Oaks horse for a very long time. Uh, you know, this filly has been uh, just getting better and better while at the same time she's not been running easy races. You know, you look at her, her first two, those were pretty easy, but then the Demoiselle, she was tested in that race by the conditions, by the trip she had. She looked like a beaten horse in the Demoiselle. She ra rallied to defeat uh, a pretty good filly named Milfoy. You know, she uh, did have a poor run in the Devona Dale, but that was a weird race for a lot of horses. Milfoy came back and run good, ran good. Uh, in the Gulfstream Park Oaks behind uh, Crazy Beautiful. So, Milfoy is a good horse, but at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not Milfoy is a graded stakes placed horse. Malathot was just really good that day, handled the conditions. Uh, she, she wasn't really handling the conditions, I should say, but the conditions were not uh, an effect to her at all. She did a good job being able to overcome that, and once she overcame that, you know, she has the the fact that she's run over a sloppy surface. She's had to deal with adversity. She had one more question that she had to answer, and that was the layoff today. I wasn't confident that she was going to be able to get the get it off the layoff, but I had enough confidence to be able to take her uh, in the or in the Ashland. Uh, and you know, since she she got the Ashland, she rallied to beat a horse past the Champagne, who looked like she was in a pretty strong position uh, coming off the turn. And Malathot just rallied really well, got her past the Champagne, had a really easy lead at the top of the stretch, and. I can't underscore how talented Malathot is. Eric's going to talk a little bit more about how good of a horse she is. But as of now, for me, I don't see a horse who's going to beat her in the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, me neither. I mean, this is this is a filly I've been high on since very early on. If you listen to our, our, our podcast, she was included in our Maiden Watch segment. And really after her win and attempted at Aqueduct, Aqueduct last November, uh, that's, when, that's when I dialed it in on this filly for the Oaks. Um, and I think the, the crazy thing about her is that she's clearly gotten better from two to three, which was very hard to, to envision given how good she already was at two. Um, but, but she clearly stepped it up. She looked beat coming off the turn. Um, and, and just it, it was clear that, that she was game and that she knew what her job was to win the race. And she got her head down uh, at the right time. Um, and, and, you know, with that with that pedigree and with her physical build, she's going to love the mile and an eighth. Reminds me a lot of one of Pletcher's. Uh, other Oaks winners, rags to riches, just from a physical sense and how they how they run and move, um, very much uh, a, a strong comparison there. Uh, Malta, I mean, this is a filly who, in, in my eyes, most I mean, there's not a, really a race out there that you know I don't do a deep dive on when I handicap. But when it comes Oaks time, I, I don't think I'm even going to have to pick up a form uh, to know who I'm going with. That's how confident I am in Malta that she is the real deal. And while while this is going to be a very deep Oaks, um, like most years, but I think this year especially. 
I think Malathon is just really that good. And I think she's going to be able to beat them all uh, on that last day in April. And with all that being mentioned, that's it for this Power 5. Again, like I mentioned, there are so many other good fillies uh, that were not included just because this is such a deep Oaks field. And, it, you know, it says how deep this field is when you have good horses like Will's Secret, uh, Crazy Beautiful, and Pauline's Pearl who are not on this list because of how deep and talented this field is. Uh, and, you know, not even getting into the horses that ran underneath them. So it's going to be a fun Kentucky Oaks. Really looking forward to it. But right now, uh, at least if you ask us, uh, the horse is going to win is Malathot. But we will see how everything shapes up come Kentucky Oaks time. Thank you for stopping by for this one. Be sure to check out uh, the Power 5 for this weekend of, of Kentucky Derby prep races. We'll have two more episodes of that this weekend. And then the final one where we wrap up the overall top five from the prep season. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Have a good one. Thank you for stopping by. Turning for home, has the advantage out to four lengths in the blink of an eye. Malathat trying to chase her down into the final furlong of the Central Bank Ashland. Past the Champagne, a two-length lead. She leads it by a length and a half. By a length, Malathat still trying. Past the Champagne, Malathat running on from the outside at the line. Malathat gets up to win it for Shadwell Stable.